kitchen. Throw away that sawdust flavored gingerbread house that you've got at the grocery store this year. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make it better from scratch. You can find the recipe and the full baking instructions in the description box below this video. Do not forget to subscribe while you're down there. And now I'm gonna show you how to make this dough like a pro. To make our gingerbread recipe, I've already laid out all of my ingredients. First is all of the dry ingredients, and this includes flour, salt, baking soda, ginger, cinnamon, cardamom, allspice, cloves, and nutmeg. And this is all-purpose flour, butter, and this is soft at room temperature. We don't want it to be melted. Blackstrap molasses, three eggs here, and I've also got some sugar here. I'm gonna start by sifting all of the dry ingredients. I'll give them a really quick whisk first, just to incorporate it. So now that everything is generally mixed together, let's sift it so it is nice and silky smooth once we add it into the other ingredients. Since I put the kosher salt in here, not all of it was able to pass through the sieve. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure that there's no lumps of flour or anything. And then I can just pop that right back into the ingredients. Take your dry ingredients and put them back into the bowl. I'm gonna save this parchment paper for later when we're rolling out all of our gingerbread dough and now we can start mixing up our ingredients. So let's start with the butter in our mixing bowl. Attach that to your mixer and then grab your paddle attachment and then you can let that run for a couple minutes in order to fluff it up. And I'm running that on power level four on the KitchenAid mixer, which is, I would say, medium to low. I've let the butter run for four to five minutes at four, um, again, medium low. And now it is nice and pale and fluffy, but not overly aerated. Our next step is going to be adding the granulated sugar. So I'm just gonna put that all in at once. And again, I'm gonna let this run for just about a minute. Um, since the butter is already fluffy, we don't have to run it for a significantly long period of time like we would for a creamed cake. Next step is going to be adding our eggs in one by one. So we've only got eggs, three eggs here for a single batch. I'll just add one in and then allow that to incorporate. And before the next addition, what I'm gonna do is scrape down the bowl and the paddle attachment as well. Let that run for a second before we add the next one in. That looks good. Add the next one in. Just scraping down the bowl one more time and then we can add the last egg in. Make sure there's no egg or butter left on the sides of the bowl. One more quick mix, just for a sec. That looks perfect. So it is really nice, light and fluffy texture. Um, I'm gonna take this out and add in the molasses. This is our nice dark black strap molasses and we're just adding all of that in there at one time. Let's get that back into the mixer. And just run that on low until it's fully homogenized in the butter mixture. Let's scrape it down to make sure that this ingredient is also fully mixed in. Quick mix and then we're ready for the dry ingredients. Next, we have all of our dry ingredients here. I'm gonna give it one last whisk to make sure everything is really nice and mixed through. Um, all of those delicious spices that we added. 
Okay, so for a single batch, I'm going to add these dry ingredients in four additions into our wet mixture. So it doesn't have to be perfect quarters, but just approximate. Um, it'll just make your life easier. Flour won't be flying everywhere quite as much, although it still might a little bit. So at this point, we wanna run it on low the entire rest of the way because um, the all-purpose flour does contain quite a bit of gluten, which is gonna help hold your gingerbread house together, but we don't wanna overwork it once we're mixing it now. So you just want the dough to begin to stick to the sides of the bowl again um, and not to see too many dry spots. And then you can add in the next addition of dry ingredients. Last addition. So we wanna mix this until it's barely coming together. Now that our dough is mixed, I'm going to remove it from the mixer, which is a little tricky at this point because it is thick. So I've just got like a flexible bench scraper and a little bit of all-purpose flour for my surface just to prevent it from sticking too much. Now, I just like to use clean hands um, to remove this from the mixing paddle. It's just much easier than trying to get a spatula around there. Just obviously make sure your hands are clean. And now for the remainder of the dough, just grab your bench scraper and you can scrape the rest out onto your surface. And the final step here before we wrap it up is just to knead it all together to make sure that it is fully mixed and you don't have any dry spots left. It can be slightly sticky at this time, um, but just use your bench scraper if it's sticking to your surface at all. For this batch, I'm just gonna divide that into two. Make it a nice rectangle shape and then we can wrap them up. So plastic wrap. I like to wrap that and then kind of smush it out in the plastic wrap to smooth out the dough. And we can wrap that once more as well. Perfect, so let's pop these in the fridge for I would say minimum four hours, but you can just leave them in there overnight. Next step is going to be to bring them out maybe half an hour before we wanna roll them so that they can soften up and then we'll be ready to roll them out and cut out all of our pieces for the gingerbread house. And here's a sneak peek into my gingerbread masterclass. So I'm gonna give you my best tips and tricks on building a fancy gingerbread house from cutting out the pieces to baking them, getting those perfectly sharp edges and also everything you need to know about piping. I'll show you how I build a nice and straight, sturdy gingerbread house. And we'll add these fun and festive holiday touches as well. Grab all of the details to join me in the course in the description box below. And of course, grab the free recipe down there as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to tag me on social media if you try out this recipe. I would love to see your gingerbread creations. Grab the recipe and everything you'll need to make this gingerbread house in the description box below. Subscribe while you're there, like this video, and I'll see you in the next one.